you were talking to yourself back then, is there anything you would have done differently or you're pretty um, – yeah. you would have do sort of the uh, same sort of formula? At the time, no, I think I – I think, yeah, I, I, I knew when I was at uni that I, I think – I just took every opportunity that I could with um, work experience because I thought that would really help me. Um, yep. And so I wouldn't, yeah, definitely. I'd, and I've told people since, like whenever I've come into contact with people trying to get in or finishing uni or at uni, I'm like, you just got to you got to go crazy, you get as much experience as possible because when you come out of it, that's what gets you a job. It's the degree itself. I don't know, everyone's got a degree. So how do you separate yourself? And for me, it was... That experience plus being having done athletics, I think. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and and you mentioned the, the two strong influences, uh, Andrew and, and uh, Loris. Yep. Are there other guys that spring to mind that helped you along the way? Yep. I suppose at Geelong at the time, Mark Thompson was the coach and um, he was a good coach. I, I, I definitely got along well with him and um, I think he, he helped initially probably just because at times it, there was times when I was I had to sort of run the program in my third year I think for a pe- short period. Loris was um, had some family um, things going on and had to take some time away from work. So, but they yep. grew me in charge for for I don't know four or five weeks or something like that. And um, so I had to deal directly with Bomber and and basically do what Loris did and you know come into meetings and do all that. And and that that was a really great part that taught me a lot. Um, yep. And he was good even when I went to North Melbourne. He sort of helped me with getting that job and um, and tell me what I should do. There might be the combine coming up with their 20-metre sprint and or their 2K time trial yo-yo um, that time of year now. What, what what sort of drills were your, maybe your top three drills for, that were specific to footballers that fixed common issues? For running technique? Yeah. Specifically? Yeah. Um, the main drill I would do was tempo running. So, and I'd still do it now, um, where you'd get over a probably 70 to 80 metres, I'd have guys run repeat efforts and uh, I'd set a time, that a flying 20 time that I'd want them to sort of cover over that distance. So, and, you know, that'd be a consistent speed that they'd run at. And then I would just, as they're running, I'd give them cues um, to, to focus on for each, for each rep. and. Try to do, you know, there might be, I wouldn't give them too much at a time, but just slowly try and work on one thing maybe per session. And How do you go about it? Um, do, you, do you speak to other S&Cs that are working with soccer clubs? Is it research? What's your, what's your main form of um, upskilling yourself to prepare? Um, I didn't really um, know anyone else who'd worked in football at the time. It was, <laughs> it was, it was pretty early on and... Um, I I knew a guy, the guy, one of the guys I actually worked with at at Celtic, names uh, Alan McCall. Who um, he's a researcher now and does a lot of does a lot of research. I think he works at uh, Barcelona and Arsenal. And but at the time he'd been out in Australia previously for a year doing working work experience at Brisbane Lions, I think. And and we just got along well. And I used to talk to him quite a lot because um, he had more experience in you know he grew up in Glasgow. And one of the key things I always used to no, is that whatever sport I was in, it was really an, doing a needs analysis of the sport was the first thing I ever did, and just looking at what's involved, the movements involved, the the um, energy systems being used, and yeah, I just I just watched the sport, and that probably helped me the most. For a young coach listening in, what what is what are well, maybe three things, or it doesn't have to be three, two things that are really important for developing relationships with with your athletes. The way you talk to them, I think, is important. Um, I think um, early on for me, I, I just listening to them and, and letting them use um, their experience and feel like they're, you know, they're valued and their opinions are, are important and their experiences, and and you know, making it the training um, as just individual as possible for each of them. Um, I yeah. think was really, really important and making them feel like that you care about them. And yeah, like you, you're out there to help them, and you'll do things for them. You go over the top, and um, yeah, go go out of your way to to make their life easier. Really, as a practitioner, did you change much of your philosophy? Did you what sort of insights did you find from it? What were some things that early days were done that ended up becoming rubbish? And and Um, 
GPS I first started using it, I think it was 2003. Um, I was at uh, North Melbourne. We remember a guy from GP Sports, yeah, Adrian Faccioni, sort of bring, bring them down to the club and gave us a couple of units to play around with. And it took, you know, the first few years, we really didn't know what we were doing, what we were doing with them. Um, we were just getting you know, total distance and we didn't really know the metrics that we needed to look for. And I probably didn't invest much time in them at the time. Probably when I got to Adelaide, I really um, started using them more, and I worked quite closely with the the sports scientists there to to you know start to look at our high speed numbers and sprint distance and and come up with some you know management systems there to, to get more out of the boys and to start to prevent injuries. I, th- I thought that there was a, a really good way that we could use GPS to help with soft tissue injuries. 